What's up everyone, my name is Vincent and today I want to talk about how to use the comparison test to determine convergence or divergence of a series. And we're going to go through these six examples here. So here is the comparison test, just in case you don't have it in your notes. So if you need to, pause the video so you could copy this. Now the comparison test could be a little bit tricky to understand. So what I like to visualize this as, to help me remember it, is if I'm trying to show that some series converges, let's say A sub K, well, the strategy is when I want to show that something converges, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare it to something bigger that's known to converge. So if I know that some series, let's call it B sub K, converges, well then if B sub K converges, then everything smaller than it is also going to converge as well. So like this is like kind of like what I visualize in my head here when I need to remember the details of the comparison test. So when I need to use the comparison test to show that something diverges, I think about this a little bit differently. Like if I want to show that some series A sub K diverges, then what I need to look for here is a smaller series, let's once again call it B sub K. And if I know that some smaller series diverges, well then everything bigger is also going to diverge as well. All right, so this is once again the concept behind the comparison test and this is what I like to think about here when I do these type of examples because sometimes it's tricky to remember the details of every theorem that you encounter. Okay so now let's see how to use the comparison test with an actual example and the first thing that jumps out at me with this first question is if I were to only look at k over 2k to the third power getting rid of that plus one here this would simplify to 1 over 2k squared and if this were the term of the series then this would result in a convergent series. So looking at the original series here, I want to say that this series converges. But I have to be careful. If I want to use the comparison test and show that something converges, then I need to compare it to something bigger. So starting with this original expression here, the k over, let's just make that a little neater, k over 2k to the third plus 1, if I want to make this bigger, I could either increase the value of the numerator or I could decrease the value of the denominator. So decreasing the value of the denominator by 1 results in a bigger expression, which is exactly equal to this. But one small thing I should specify is that this is true for values of k that are greater than or equal to 1. And the reason why we mention this is because it corresponds with the start of the series. And if I didn't say this, something like k equals 0 would result in something undefined. So now when we go to the next step here, we're going to take this resulting expression here and we're going to throw it in the series starting from k equals 1 to infinity. And we have 1 over 2k squared. So now we're ready to use the comparison test. Since this inequality holds true, we have a bigger expression here. And this resulting series here converges, it's a convergent p-series multiplied by one-half, then the original series is going to converge as well by the comparison test. All right, for the second example here, what I want to look at first is just k over k times square root k. So we're getting rid of that plus 1 in the numerator. And when this simplifies, the k's cancel out, and we have 1 over the square root of k, which could also be written as 1 over k to the 1 half power. And when I look at this, I see if this were part of a series, this would represent a divergent series because the exponent is less than 1. So looking at this original series here, I want to say this diverges. So if I want to use the comparison test, I'm starting with the original expression k plus 1 over k times the square root of k. And remember from the comparison test, if I want to show something diverges, I need to compare it to something smaller. So then I need to think, how do I know that this resulting expression is smaller than the original? Well, to decrease the value of a fraction, you could either make the numerator smaller or you can make the denominator bigger. So if we make the if we make the numerator smaller, we could do that by subtracting 1 and it results in this. 
So I know that my original expression here is greater and my new expression is smaller. And one thing we will specify again, this is true for k greater than or equal to 1 because that corresponds to the start of the series and something like k equals 0 is not going to be a problem now because we're starting at 1. So what we're going to do next is we're going to place the resulting expression in the series going from 1 to infinity. So we have 1 over k to the 1 half power. But now we're ready to write our conclusion because we showed that this resulting expression here is smaller and we know this is divergent. So by the comparison test, this original series is going to diverge as well. Okay, for the third example here, I want to look at 9 to the k over 10 to the k power. And if I were to rewrite this as parentheses 9 tenths to the k power, I look at this and say if this were the main term of a series, this would represent a convergent geometric series. So that tells me the original series is going to converge as well. So what I want to do is, to use the comparison test, we're starting off with the original 9 to the k power over 3 plus 10 to the k power. And if I want to show that this converges, I need to compare this to something bigger. So I need to be able to say that this new expression here is greater than the original. And remember, if I want to make a fraction bigger, I could either increase the value of the numerator or decrease the value of the denominator. So in this case, I would decrease the value of the denominator by 3 to get to this new expression here. And then we could say that this is true for values of k greater than or equal to 1 because, once again, this is corresponding to the start of this series. So then what we do next is we analyze the series starting at k equals 1 and going to infinity, the series of 9 tenths k. And this is a convergent geometric series because the r value here inside is between negative 1 and 1. So since this series converges, the original series is going to converge as well by the comparison test. Okay, so now let's take a look at question four. What we need to do is investigate the function cosine of x. And it's important to know that cosine of x just oscillates between 1 and negative 1 over and over as x goes to infinity. So sorry for the sloppy sketch, but that's why it's a sketch. It doesn't have to be super neat. The main idea that we need from this is that it's bouncing between 1 and negative 1 infinitely often. And the reason why that's helpful is it allows us to look at this original expression, cosine squared k over k squared plus 1. And we could say now, if the maximum value of cosine is 1, then the maximum value of cosine squared is also 1. So I could say that my original expression is less than or equal to 1 over k squared plus 1. And when I look at this expression, 1 over k squared, it's reminding me of a convergent p-series. So I want to say that this original series is going to converge. But the only problem here is I can't say directly that this 1 over k squared plus 1 in a series would converge because it's not identical to a p-series yet. So what we would need to do is we would have to compare this to 1 over k squared. And 1 over k squared is greater than 1 over k squared plus 1 because remember, if I want to make this fraction here bigger, I could increase the value of the numerator or I could decrease the value of the denominator. So if I decrease the denominator by 1, it gives me this new fraction here. But one thing that I'll specify to make this true is that k has to be greater than or equal to 1 so that it corresponds with the start of the series uh, with the start of the series and that something like k equals 0 doesn't ruin this fraction and make it undefined. So now that we have this in place, we could take 1 over k squared and throw it in this series here. And the series is starting from k equals 1 and going to infinity. So now since this is a convergent p-series, 
and all of this inequality stuff over here is true, by the comparison test, this original series is going to converge as well. Okay, so let's take a look at this question here. And what we need to know for this question is a little bit about the graph of arctangent. And if that phrase is not familiar, just know that you could call arctangent tangent inverse. Like those phrases are interchangeable. So depending on who your teacher is or your professor is, you know, some teachers prefer to call it tangent inverse, some prefer to call it arctangent. And the graph of arctangent has upper and lower bounds, these two horizontal asymptotes here. And the graph goes this way in the positive direction, and pi over 2 is a horizontal asymptote as x goes to infinity, and negative pi over 2 is a horizontal asymptote in the direction as x goes to negative infinity. So what we need to make use of here is that for arc tangent, the maximum value is pi over 2, which tells us that if we look at this original here, arc tangent of k over k to the 1.2 power, then I could say that this resulting expression here, pi over 2 over k to the 1.2, is a bigger expression, that the original expression here is less than pi over 2 over k to the 1.2. So what this tells us now is that if this were the main term of a series, this would represent a convergent p-series or multiplied by pi over 2 because our exponent is greater than 1. So that tells me that this original series is going to converge. And once again, I will just specify here that this is true for values of k that are greater than or equal to 1. Once again, to correspond to the start of the series and so that something like k equals 0 doesn't just ruin this fraction here. So now we're going to just look at this series from k equals 1 up to infinity of pi over 2 over k to the 1.2 power. And this is a convergent series, so by the comparison test, our original series is going to converge as well. Okay, so let's look at this last question here. And the first thing that jumps out at me is that k factorial increases really, really fast as k goes to infinity. So if I have a denominator that's increasing really, really quick, that tells me that this series is likely to converge. But we need to investigate this. So what we want to do is we're going to expand 1 over k factorial. And that's 1 over k times k minus 1 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. So if I want to say that this converges, I need to compare this to something bigger. So if I want to make this fraction bigger, I could either increase the numerator or decrease the value of the denominator. But what we want to do here is we're going to decrease the value of the denominator. So this k, I'm going to turn it into a 2. And anything that's greater than 2 in this string of factors here, I'm just going to turn into a 2. So I have 2 times 2 all the way down the line, and then this 3 I'm going to turn into a 2, and then I have times 2 times 1. But I have to be careful with how I count this. I have to ask myself, how many factors of 2 do I have? Well, from 1 to k is k terms. So if one of those terms is not a 2, that means that there are k minus 1 2's in my denominator. So then this results in 1 over 2 to the k minus 1 power, which I could just call 1 half to the k minus 1. But one thing I have to be careful with here is that for this expression, I should throw in a less than or equal to because if k were equal to 1, I would have 1 half to the 0 power and 1 over 1 factorial is equal to 1. 1 half to the 0 power is equal to 1. So in that case, they would be equal. So it would be sloppy if I just left this as a less than. 
And we want to say that this is true for values of k greater than or equal to 1 so that it corresponds to the start of the series. So now what we can investigate here is the series starting from k equals 1 and going up to infinity of 1 half to the k minus 1 power. And when we look at this, this is a convergent geometric series. So since this inequality is true and this series converges, that tells us that the original series 1 over k factorial is going to converge as well. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on the comparison test. If you found this video to be helpful, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you have any topics that you want me to cover, just leave them in the comments section below. And thank you all for watching.